So now it's time for our leadership lesson, and we're focusing on culture. And so a very unique business culture to work in and be a part of is family business. For those who don't know a whole lot about my background, I grew up in family business. My grandfather owned a feed store in Lola, Kentucky, where I grew up, and my dad was uh, with him in the feed store business, and I was third generation. And so I first started working at the feed store before I was even 10. I don't know if there's one solid answer about what makes family business different. They definitely are different. And I've come up with a couple of things that I think make family business a little bit different. Number one is they're pretty frugal. There's a broadcasting company based here in Missouri that I was a part of for a long time. And I worked in the corporate office. And my first corporate office with them, I think I had two saw horses and an old door was my desk. We'd have all of our bank meetings at the corporate office because we wanted to show them we weren't wasting any money. And my gosh, it was just an old old office. Now, later on, we did move to a very nice Bank of America building. When Bank of America left the market, we took over their office. But for a long time, we had this old office and we all had these old makeshift desks and uh, it was kind of a rundown place. But family business, they're pretty frugal. While countless corporations talk about stock options and turning managers into shareholders and all that kind of thing, In the family business, the company's money is the family's money. That is how it is presented. Number two, you got to jump through a few hoops to get a capital expenditure approved. I mean, they, they are really, really pay attention to what they spend money on for improvements. Now, that's also an advantage in a family business. Most family businesses think really long term because they want the business to be around for future family members. So they will reinvest in the business where a lot of businesses, they're just thinking about making a profit and taking the profit home with them. Family businesses, a lot of times want to ensure that they're around long-term for future family members to be able to work in the business. Number three, I would say they generally don't carry a lot of debt because again, they're being really frugal for future generations. They don't want to pass that large debt on to the coming generations who are going to inherit the business. I'll tell you what one family-run business CEO told me. He said, people think we're rich and courageous, but in fact, we're cowardly. We leave most of the cash in the company to avoid giving away too much power to the banks. And I can tell you that is absolutely right. I learned that from my grandfather. When he went to borrow money from a bank, he said it was like selling a percent of his company. And the bank owned a certain amount of the company because he owed them money. He didn't like that. He wanted to be 100% in charge, 100% owner, right? And then the fourth thing I'd say is they typically retain talent better than competitors. I know when I was in charge of a family-owned business for 13, 14 years, we had a very high retention rate. And we competed with a lot of corporations, some publicly traded corporations. And I always said I never lost anybody I didn't want to. That didn't mean I didn't lose some people, but I didn't mind losing them. Anybody I didn't want to lose, I typically didn't. Even to the fact that I was offered a job with a competitor once, and I asked them why they wanted to hire me, and they said, we can't hire any of your people. So if we get you, we figure we can get a whole bunch more people, right? They'll follow you. I would say that's true in a lot of family businesses. They they do retain talent uh, because there is positives and negatives to being treated like family. When a business that I'm coaching asks me, do you think we ought to have a family-oriented culture in our company? I always say, what does family mean to you? Because it doesn't mean the same thing to everybody. Because not everybody's experience with family has been positive. So when you tell somebody, we're going to have a family-oriented culture, that sends some people screaming and running out the door. Uh, While other people are like, oh, that sounds good. I like the nurturing family. And here's a subliminal message that goes with that. When you create a family-oriented culture in a company, there's a subliminal thought that you can't be kicked out. 
Because in most families, no matter what you do, you will not be disowned and kicked out of the family. For a lot of people, the message is, well, if this is a family-oriented business, I'm pretty much here for life. No matter what I do, I will not be, you know, kicked out. And so you got to be careful with that. And you got to make sure that you define what family-oriented culture really means. If, if you're meaning that we're all going to respect and care for each other and we like spending time together, Tim mentioned that earlier when he was on. You know, he said, you know, we all like each other. We like spending time together. And that's your definition of family. Great. But if it means that no matter what your performance is, you're still going to be accepted, I'm not sure that's the best. And in a lot of family-owned business, performance is not necessarily the key. Do you know what the key is? Longevity. Because in those kinds of companies, if you've been there a long time, that counts for something. Because the thought is, we got to keep this business going for future generations. So longevity is a little bit more important that, yeah, we have good years. Yeah, we have bad years. But performance isn't the most important thing. The most important thing is, is that we're still here. A lot of times when you downplay performance and you focus on longevity, that can lead to not great performance. As I've said many times, there are people who have 20 years of experience and every year they've gotten better. And there's some people who have 20 years of the same experience of that first year. They just repeated that first year. They learned a lot and they've repeated that same year over and over for 20 years. So it depends on what you mean by 20 years of of, uh, experience. And when you're thinking about building family culture, sometimes, and I've pointed that out here just briefly, that can be negative because it can lead to people maybe being a little complacent because they feel like they're in. I'll also tell you that when I was growing up and my dad was at the feed store and then he was also raising and training horses for people. I had every kind of job growing up as a kid on a horse farm. You know, everything from feeding them to uh, grooming them to uh, washing them to trimming their feet to putting their shoes on later on, nailing their shoes to their hooves and brushing the cocoa burrs out of their manes and their tails. And my dad was very perceptive. He knew I didn't enjoy those things. I'd rather be watching TV or playing some kind of ball. So he just comes to me one day, and this is the advantage of being kind of in a family business is these kind of moments. But my dad comes to me and he says, Tony, I know you don't like doing this, but The reason we do this is we're not doing this just for fun. This is how our family makes a living. This is how our family puts food on the table. This is how we buy school clothes for you. This is how we afford to put gas in our car. And it caused me to look at my tasks in a different way. There is a meaningful reason why I'm doing this. It's not just because my dad told me to. It's because it counts for something, and it's actually the reason and the means by which we live, which kind of turned my attitude around a little bit because I saw, oh, okay, you're not just telling me to do this because you want to teach me something. You're telling me this because this is a real-world reality. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time for another episode of Better Than Before. This is Tony Richards saying goodbye, so long, and remember, everything gets better when you get better.